and how it contributes to the achievement of certain development objectives. So I'm going to share our experiences here in USID. Um, unfortunately, there is a significant lack of uh, data and evidence about blending projects because some people at times blend finance without even knowing that they are blending financing. So if you look at financing, we're even talking about formal and informal financing. So I have also given an objective to today's uh, uh, presentation. The objective is to identify areas that are key to maximizing the development impacts of blending on projects and describe the associated uh, risks. We talk about qualitative and quantitative risk. There are a lot of a lot of risk associated with development, especially developments that has to do with receipt of funds and finance. And those that have to do with also construction. So when you talk about blended financing, where you have various parties bringing funds together, there are a number of risks that must be managed well. Um, let's take, go straight and take the definition of uh, blended financing. Is the strategic, when we talk about strategic, you see it has moved beyond the realms of ad hoc, ad hoc utilization of financing. That means we are not talking about informal uh, blending here, we're talking about formal blending. Uh, mobilization. I, I remember I attended a, a training in Bangkok, and that training I will, I will advise anybody who is interested in solving problems that has to do with financing to look at mobilizing finance for development. It's, it's, it's an interesting training. There are a lot of literature on it on, on the internet. You will be able to look at this whole menu of a basket full of options that can that can be utilized here. So I will define blended finance as the strategic use of development finance for mobilization of additional finance towards sustainable development in developing countries such as Nigeria. It attracts commercial capital towards projects that contribute to sustainable development while providing financial return to investors. That means investors put money into it with, um, with the aim of also making a, some return on investment, ROI. They want to gain something from it. Um, somebody can say it is also the use of catalytic capital from public or philanthropic sources, such as uh, the World Bank or um, USAID or just name it, any other development organization, to increase private sector investment in sustainable development. Blended finance creates uh, investable opportunities in developing countries, which leads to more development impact. There are already some good examples of blended financing instruments, and I will take us through each of them. You must have heard about guarantees. In USID, we have what we call uh, development guarantees. Um, we usually apply that in supporting small and medium scale enterprises. This could be SMEs, maybe in the wash sector as well. What we usually do with uh, those uh, guarantees or bonds is, uh, um, you know, if there are difficulties for uh, private sector mostly especially in Nigeria, to get to get resources from the bank, the local banks. So what we usually do is uh, we have some agreements on with some banks. I know we have with uh, Fidelity Bank and uh, some other banks. There is a staff who sits on a desk. <laughs> There is somebody, a staff who is dedicated to manage 
Okay. Yes, I've muted the person that was talking. The person is muted currently. Sorry about that. Yeah, who 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 is responsible for that? We have about five banks, including a co-bank. So if you have a business and you want to do some sustainable development, maybe you can want to supply water or sanitation to a community or an area. The bank can't give you money because they don't. They see a lot of risk. They don't see the benefits of that to what to their to their line of business. You you sign on to that guarantee. If you sign on to that guarantee. And you, you want to take like a million dollars or maybe one billion naira from, from the bank. USID can give a guarantee because it already has an agreement with the bank that they are guaranteeing that loan you are taking up to 80%. 80% means the risk of the bank is just 20%. And USID is assuming the risk of 80%. So with that kind of deal, the bank is more uh, comfortable to release, to fund the activity and it will be benchmarked based on the agreed milestones. Uh, you use the money to do the development, and uh, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll, it will be a win-win because all of us will be happy that uh, you can also leverage. There are also other guarantees that you can leverage from other sources, but I'm just telling you about what happens here and when we guarantee facilities you get from the bank. Just like the government can can guarantee the deposits you make in the bank, you know that the, all the banks have insurance. So the government guarantees the insurance guarantees your, your resources in the banks, so that when the bank goes under, you can be sure that you 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 your money will not be lost hundred percent. So that is that about guarantees. Then I will, we also have. Uh, um, then we have a, we have a, what we call first first loss first loss capital. First loss is um, if you maybe you you are you empty you empty septic. Pit, you are SME. I'm narrowing, narrowing it to watch. I'm not looking at the broader development. If maybe you, you have a truck, you empty toilets, or you have an innovation that you're not sure, it, the innovation treats water, you're not sure it will, it, will be, it, will, it will sell. So there are difficulties with pushing it out there. So we can decide to say, okay, who will fund your first loss, the risk, the initial money that if you incur any any loss, we, we will defray it. If you do it with the first initial or before you break even, there will be a period of loss, maybe over one year, you will have an uh, overrun of staff salaries or costs because of the difficulties in the enabling environment, constraints in the enabling environment. You, you incur more than you had. Your transactional cost increases more than you had you had uh, uh, imagined or, or, or pro projected. Then it will it will be it will be it, it will be deferred. Beyond USID doing that, there are a lot of other organizations that can do it. We can make we can pull some resources and put it together and say, okay, federal ministry of water resources or the wash funds that have been proposed in the water law that this money will be used to support wash small scale enterprises so that the difficulties or the cost, the financial losses they will incur within the first year of operation can be managed. Let me give you another example that applied to me directly. When when I was Please, there is a background noise. I hope, yeah. All these things exist. When I was uh, when I was in the private sector, I was doing my own business. I got a fellowship. They called the Ashoka Group in the U.S. So they made they gave me a, a first loss capital for the first three years of the of the innovation I was pushing out. 
the water treatment filter technology I was pushing out. They said, okay, we know there will be so much inertia in the market to buy your product. We are going to pay for your salaries for the first three years so that you, you will not be bogged down with personal financial needs that will weigh you down. So for, for three years, on monthly basis, my salary was paid by this international group to make sure that my technology is pushed out into the market without so much difficulty on my part because that is what makes people, they want to abandon their innovation when they know that they cannot uh, meet meet the needs, their daily needs. It becomes difficult for them. They want to go and do something else. So first loss, capital. So that kind of resources supports what other resources you already had. Maybe you 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 did the uh, you did the uh, you got some money. We usually do is you got some grants, maybe public grants. You got some grant like you win, and other sources of funds you could you could get from from uh, from other opportunities that come up. Then you are struggling with developing your concept or the, developing the technology, then eventually you 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 get opportunity for a first loss capital, which will take care of certain costs that gives you some real trouble, then that will add to the resources you already have and help you to push your technology out there. If this is not limited to 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 maybe to to a small scale private sector organization. They can also apply to the water utility utilities. You know, when we talk about the sector, we tend to focus more on the water utilities as if water utility is all there is that requires reform. But because of uh, uh, the, <coughs> the opportunities they sit upon, they have been so much focus that if we get it right to utilities, every other thing can 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 respond accordingly. So for a, for a utility that has rebranded and that is uh, born again in quote that is born again in quote, you can also have some first loss. If uh, if you have problems with uh, maybe maybe diesel and electricity, you can have an investor coming in. Investor can be. A local bank can be private companies, maybe not seen, can be anybody coming to say, okay, for the next three years, we'll continue to take care of your diesel and chemical cost until you start breaking even when you can be able to to pay for it. So these things these these facilities are there. There is also what we call uh, <coughs> Aging funds. Aging funds is, uh, you know, there's so much inflation and uh, and the devaluation of the currency. And the currency, if you bring dollars now, we can lose its value within within one year. If somebody gives you maybe maybe hundred thousand US dollars, the value the value may suffer some depreciation. So there is an arrangement that is made with the bank or the institution that is bringing the money forward so that they can hedge that fund so that the value never depreciates, rather it increases. So the gains you make in the course of doing that is also an, a blended finance. You are, you are getting extra money while maintaining the value of your money, you are also maintaining what you had. You never suffer depreciation. So these things are not things that are done just informally or that just happens. They have to be strategically packaged. I think I've spoken about Like uh, the water utility, or the water utilities, the main source of funding is 
government budgets. Government is funding you. Then uh, maybe you are selling water and you are raising like 5 to 10% of your cost. Then government is funding you. Then uh, you can also respond for application for grants. Nothing stops you. You, you are more like a hybrid organization. You are doing both an economic and social service. So you, you, you can get a grant. So when we call this as TA grants, these are technical assistance grants that help you to do some, some work. When you see USID work with utilities in some states, maybe the Lagos State Water Utility or, or the Abia State Water Board, all those organizations, what they are, we are supporting them is uh, technical assistance grants which is also a blended financing for them because already they are getting money from the sale of water and they are also getting money from the government. So but these things are expected to help them to increase their, 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 their basket of funds, financing available. So what matters now is to utilize these things properly. Unfortunately, we have seen situations where when a, a, a utility is being supported with um, technical assistance funds. They want to see it as if it should be 100%. That it should only be these technical grants that should take over all the needs of the utility. You, you, you already have funds because government is financing you and then you are selling water. So all you need to do a strategic outlay of look at 100% overview of my establishment, so so percentage is coming from government, so so is coming from sale of water, and then technical assistance grants are coming from maybe VIPCG or from this organization or that. You look at it, we are what percentage? Then if you have if you have gaps, you can continue to strategize to make sure that those gaps are filled. That, that is why I said initially that these things are already here. When we talk about them, it appears as if they're not here. They're here, but we have we have not been able to pay adequate attention to recognize that they are here. So we, we now ask, why is blending finance important? It, because it helps us to manage... It helps us to manage risk. Number one is that it helps us to manage risk. That is funding risk. And then another thing is it helps us to optimize the impact of development. It helps us to optimize the impact of development. And uh, it helps to accelerate the SDGs. There is, um, let, me, let me say something quickly. There is what is called impact investing or payment for, for results. Usually, what we normally do here is we pay contractors based on uh, maybe based on milestones, which is very effective, or we pay you a letter of credit when you do work. You you already have a letter of credit. The banks, the the you you the letter is given to you by USID. So when you do the work, what they mean that at your request they will be funding you to do the work you are doing. So, but we felt all those ones they are not they are not strong enough because the development results have not been very visible. So, what we we have uh, decided to do we have examples. If you look at the work DAI is doing in Haiti for USID, it's more of pay, 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 paying for results. You can only be paid <laughs> when you have achieved. You are not paid for effort. Many of the people who work here just get paid for efforts, efforts that never really translate into results. So when we talk about blended financing, it's more of insisting that we, we must see results, the results will be there, so that we, if we want to give water, not just the outputs, but the outputs are translating to, to results. We want to see the results, and the results are happening. Um, so, um, blended finance, as I said, when you look at the uh, blended finance vehicle, as I mentioned before, uh, 
it combines capital with different levels of risk in order to catalyze risk risk adjusted uh, market rates seeking financing into impact investments. There is, if you go to the World Bank or you go to other international groups, there is what they call a blended finance working group who make sure that they capture details on the blended finance, how it's being utilized across the world. Um, and to simpl simplify uh, my, my presentation, I will uh, want to guide you as a, a listener uh, by aggregating all that I have said into uh, three, three key areas of, of perhaps of, of interest you can, you can note. One, when somebody asks you what is blending, uh, I would define it as the combination of public concessional uh, ODA, organized uh, development assistance, with private public resources, generally with the aim of mobilizing or leveraging development finance from other other actors. However, this is uh, this involves a lot of design options. You have a lot of design options on how you 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 you, you want to have it, uh, and there are practical implications. Then another thing you can also uh, you you may be keen to know about is. Uh, how does blending work? Uh, as I noted before, it helps us to blend, to leverage or mobilize other, other, other resources, other sources of financing. Note the use of financing and funding. Uh, I use them interchangeably, but that does not mean that they are the same. Financing and funding, they are not the same. So we are talking about blended financing. That means, and I told you that uh, when you talk about <laughs> blended financing, people who put their money, who want to finance, are also looking for some level of return on investment. This is not just about uh, funding. When you talk about funding, you're talking about uh, uh, maybe just grants, money that cannot be uh, refunded, that cannot be returned. So you see that blended finance is for people who are really into the business. They are running their organization as an enterprise. Know the difference between an organization and an enterprise as well. An enterprise is into a business. It's a firm, a corporation. An organization, yes, it's a generic name, but it's not specific on what you do. So you have to make the decision now. The utility I am managing or I'm running, is it an enterprise or is this just, just an organization that is not clearly defined whether... It is there to look at its books to make sure that uh, it is being run properly as a business. Over the years, we have been talking about commercialization. We wanted to to build that spirit of of, of enterprise. <laughs> Another thing is how is uh, blending being used uh, beyond the me mechanism of uh, blending itself. There are several other elements that influences the development impact of blending projects. Uh, if you look at the uh, documents from OECD, uh, it, it, it mobilizes uh, a key part of implementation of blending projects and the cornerstone of any further any further work you you may want to work on. So the three questions I try to answer is: What is blending? How does blending work? And how is blending being being used? So the resources available to you, whether funding or financing, you have to sit back and ask yourself, how is being used? How do we develop our budget? Do we have categorization of the various sources of money we get? I know some utilities are also into different businesses apart from selling water. You have to capture those properly. Those other sources of getting money, maybe you have a property, people are renting it out. It should be properly captured. It's not a private resource or money that is uh, uh, opaque. Nobody knows where it goes. It should be captured. All those things are <laughs> all, all, all part of what we are talking about here. Um, finally, I, I will, uh, I will give you uh, some risks that have been associated with uh, uh, blended financing. I have, I have, I have 
derived this risk from uh, some cases of uh, blended financing where they have officially happened. One is uh, issues of inflation. I said it before. The lack of a common methodology to account for uh, fund money from ODA loans or funds uh, for blending and mobile finance can lead to double counting and makes it possible to report it as ODA money, which is not spent in the concessional way. Then the second one is uh, ODA diversion from other aid modalities. Um, new accounting methodologies could provide intended or unintended incentives for using uh, blending example because in addition to ODA, you have uh, donors. Donors can report significant amounts of uh, mobilized finance, and uh, it is also possible that blending projects are easier to align with donors' political and economic priorities. The third one is uh, we have uh, uh, biases. The ODA often concentrates on uh, on certain sectors where they can easily get uh, uh, quick uh, returns. Those ones they feel they will not get quick returns. They, they really get uh, get uh, attention. Then we also have uh, the fourth one is lack of demonstrable development effects. When we have uh, weakness in the monitoring and evaluation system or inadequate uh, definitions of additionality, you know, when we, when when you do development work, you may have uh, two objectives or three objectives. Yeah. Then then along the line, you can have another unintended consequence or unintended benefits that will that will come up. So that is an additionality. If you are not careful, you will miss it. You will, you will just be narrow-minded, looking at uh, just what you had at your initial aims, and that will, that will not be good. Uh, there is also lack of coordination. The fifth one, lack of coordination with bilateral aid agencies and uh, other donors. People that people that do uh, like utilities that get get support from agencies like USID can also at the same time be getting assistance from other agencies. And uh, these different organizations should be able to, to to meet and discuss because all of them are working towards a common objective in your utility. So do not create a room of uh, information asymmetry, making it difficult for one to know what the other one is doing because you want to benefit uh, in, a, uh, uh, in a most inappropriate manner from that uh, that asymmetry. So, so it's a risk. And then, uh, then they also have uh, issues of project ownership and accountability. Uh, transparency is, is a challenge in many blending projects. <laughs> so, as I said. Really, we tend to hide information and we are not very transparent. We want to, even, even to the government that is that owns some of these utilities, we do not really open up to the government to tell the extent of what donor A or donor B has done because we do not want it to affect uh, our budget inflows. And that uh, that can also be, be, be a problem. Or when you, USID has finished working in a utility A, you know that USID worked on so so and so area, maybe area Z, and then what bank comes, they want to work in that same area. You 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 keep quiet, and uh, you will never bother to bring the World Bank and uh, the donor that worked earlier to a meeting so that they can look at what both have done together with you and the owners of your company. So that those are. The, some of the risk we see when we blend finance. But when, uh, for as Vicky noted before, I think she has a very good understanding of this topic too. Um, blended financing, you look at, uh, you look at the various players and uh, understand what each partner is bringing, even the, even the local private sector here. And uh, 
countries have been categorized in the ability to be able to push this through. She said that, and uh, Nigeria very well falls into categories of countries that can effectively do blended financing. And uh, from our view, blended financing has been happening here too, not adequately categorized as one, but we see it when we look at ongoing efforts that are happening out, out there. Uh, but blended financing in an environment that has so much risk of corruption uh, may, may be very difficult to, to calculate what has been achieved and what has not been uh, achieved. So I, I will leave it at this and uh, I'll be ready to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. Thank you. It will be very one of the wash sector. <laughs> Thank you so much for 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 your presentation. I I can say that I have learned even in this short while. I've learned so much, and it would really. I wish we had all day to just talk about it and share uh, tools and stuff so that we can go on and and get more money into the sector and especially. Uh, to the direct service delivery uh, individuals or, or organizations that are providing direct uh, services. But we have such a short time. So what we should do from here on is, um, I think people, um, very, people will raise their hands and then we'll bring them in. So everyone else will mute their um their mics until um, you know you raise your hand and then you're brought in and then you can ask the questions and I think Dr. Joaquin can will then continue to answer the questions. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, if you understood what he, the presentation he made, or understand it to some extent, uh, let me see a raise, you know, people raise their hands. Do we know how to raise our hands on this platform? Yes, we have somebody that raised, uh, we have one person okay. to talk. Okay, so, um, so let's go. Oluwa. Let's go. Uh, Oluwa, you can go ahead and um, you have the floor now. Uh, yeah, good minutes. Good morning, everyone. Um, let me first of all wish us a happy new year. I'm so elated to see this coming up. And let me say thanks to coordinator for this. Um, really good work. But some of the things, oh, most of the things he has shared with us are things that, that good opportunities that uh, operators or some professionals are in the dark of. My question is this, sir. We know that currently, as a nation, Nigeria, we have, I mean, we are highly impacted by COVID-19. Revenues from taxes to government has reduced drastically. Also, revenues from all sales has reduced. And in turn, has affected subventions being given to water utilities in the country. I, am, I don't have facts and figures, but I can, say to, I can say that most water utilities hardly can can operate now because of lack of operation and maintenance costs as a result of uh, low taxes to government. So how can utilities take advantage of the first loss? Because one of the to us, you mentioned that the first loss can be applied in recovery costs of diesel, cost of chemicals, which I think will go a long way in, in helping these utilities or keeping them afloat. Thank you very much. Okay, should I answer as they ask? Okay, thank you. See, when you talk about first loss, you see, when a utility is fully branded, we're, we're doing transformation. We've been on this journey for a while now. Vicky has been very, very dedicated to this. We discuss all the time, both formally and informally, on how to get our utilities uh, back, on, back on their feet again. 
you see, when you when you have a utility that is born like again, not just on paper, but in real <laughs> in, in real, in reality, they are born again in the sense that the recruitment of management staff is done appropriately. There are laws and policies, standard operating procedures, and the utility that has is no longer business as usual. You have new 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 way of doing things. And they are ready to stick. They are adequate checks and balances. Then these things, there will be due diligence. These things are sorted. Then who can propose you for first loss? Okay, these guys are starting new. The maybe the whole customers they have in the CTA, they have they now have their private borrows, so they don't need. Uh, they, we are not sure of the market anymore to take care of this. So we can say, okay, first loss, we are. For the first one year or two years or three years, the cost of diesel or fuel can be taken care of. I do not know any any utilities at that point. But I remember, yeah. even though even though this has been disputed before by one of the consultants, I don't know if it's here. I said there was a time when the World Bank was uh, had an arrangement to defray the cost of electricity for the Lagos State Water Corporation and uh, for some time, I think two or three years, because that was very messy. The record, the financial records were messed up by payment for electricity. So he said, okay, don't worry, we'll take care of that to so normalize it. In order to make yeah. today, put the utility on its feet towards profitability, you can do a follow-up investigation whether that result was achieved, that intention was achieved or not. I wouldn't want to talk about it anymore, but it has happened in this country before. Thank you. Hello, can can uh, Abuyo or Labisi ask a question? Yeah, Abere. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mrs. Agbero has her hand up. Yes, I've, I've asked her to mute. Oh. Um, okay. She has done. Uh, good morning, everybody. Or say, let me say good afternoon, Sazama. Okay. The organizer and other female colleagues. Mine is not really a direct question is to seek clarification and possibly advice because of our experience. Uh, in a case where the blended financing you have uh, itemized, let me use mm. the word itemized, that these are the roles the government in terms of financing, they are providing support to the agency, the private sector is coming in this way. The development partners, they are coming in. You have prepared your books. Knowing fully well, you have been able on the book to ad identify the gaps, which you are now thinking, uh, seeking blended finance to may maybe uh, take care of. So as to start off in a new form, I mean existing utility. And all of a sudden, your agreement, the government or one of the partners breaches the agreement. The risk, the problem, the challenge you should bring on the utility, it will not be, it will not be something that you can calculate in terms of financing, but it will have serious impact on the utility. Like, for example, the, pro the government has promised, okay, providing, um, providing, as my earlier colleague, uh, the one that spoke earlier said, promised providing regular inputs like the chemical and the diesel. And the, uh, uh, and in terms of maintenance, the utility is to support bringing the revenue to capture so, so aspect. And then the, uh, development that partners, the fund that they'll be providing, you used to take care of this and this, and you have itemized. And the book work and the paperwork is, all, all, is good. And all of a sudden, the government 
backsound or they shy off or systematically they will not say it directly to you but they delay or disrupt the process then the 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 the, the challenge now is done on the utility to begin to struggle then at that time every other partner will shift blame on the utility leaders not knowing and the utility because you are also associated partially to the government you don't want to reveal the whole secret even when you reveal they don't answer you because uh, you are dealing with politicians who care less about most of your feeling, uh, challenges so in such a case me uh, uh, dr joachim what do you really advise because these are the real raw uh, challenges of the corporation uh, the organizer mrs uh, vipcg can confirm and attest to some of these things i'm telling you so these, these, these are the problems we are facing it is and by the time you bring people together the blame will also go back to the utility end. and the utility i should have done this should have taken this risk should have taken this that blame will come to them but not looking at the background or, or, or the story from outside but you said something that is key that a utility that is actually reformed, that everything is said. Is there anyone in Nigeria that everything is said? How many are there if there is any? So we all have one problem or the other. But the fact remains that how do we work on all these uh, promises of the government that they will take care of this, the utility to come like this, the, the utility to work this way, development partners will do this. And another problem we have is that some of these supervising ministry of the utility, they are also selfish in the policy making. They want to bring in so many things just to run the, uh, the utility down that they cannot perform so that they will they'll be able to have their way and know uh, and put in their eye. So it's a lot of, uh, a lot of all these clumsy things, wrong things that they are practicing <coughs> right there. Thank you. So what do you advise? Doctor. Okay, thank you, ma. I'm happy to see you again after after a while. <laughs> thank you very much. It's good to see you, ma. So, um, okay. you know, it's just like what you said is just like uh, when you know that you should be paid your salary by the end of the month. Suddenly, that salary is not paid even three oh, months exactly. after. Three months after, your, yes. your child, your child is going back to school. You need to uh, feed. You need to support somebody. Then the money is not there. So that thing can cause a lot of uh, difficulties for, for you mm -hmm. set back. So uh, that is why I would advise that every utility should have an adaptive risk management strategy. Mm -hmm. So to help you to capture all those possible risks. I look at if the, if the government fails to give us our subvention or to make its own contribution, what should we do? Capture those things. Then I will give you some ideas of what you, you can do. If you think that government really brings money, even within three months, within six months, then you plan and have a window of when eventually you think they usually bring the money. Maybe if they fail you in the first month, maybe they bring it in the fourth month. So you can have a window of how to manage that four months within which you get the money and not to continue to rely on monthly when you know that that monthly is very uncertain and doubtful. The Honorable Minister for Water Resources in the water law, water bill that is stored in the National Assembly, you know, I continue to talk about that, that bill because it's an interesting piece of legislation. But I also have my criticisms of, of that bill because I feel that uh, there are also defects in it, but the good ones, I continue to talk about the good ones. That bill talks about a wash trust fund. So that wash trust fund, we do not know the content of that wash trust fund, but I want to believe, like it's used elsewhere, both in the UK and in the US, that trust fund can come in in such situations to help you fill that gap so that the, the impact will not be too much. When there was COVID, COVID-19, uh, 
utility is all over the world, even in the US, suffered so much because exactly. people were not paying. And also, the thing affected the revenue. The government used similar funds to support them over that period so that they remained operational without yeah. shutting down. Then another thing is, another yeah. thing is, you can, you can, you can have a local agreement, the utility. That is why we insist that the utility must be commercialized, yeah. so that you have a business plan that shows how much you make. You can get the local banks to buy into your business plan, and they will be ready to give you overdraft that will help you to to manage such periods of wait or waiting for government so there are a lot of things that can a lot of uh, a lot of options but i think we can discuss both of them off of camera thank you thank you thank you mm. we also have uh, we have sanusi engineer sanusi from kano Very, uh, are you talking to engineer Sonusi? Okay, before the Sonusi, we have um Audu Paul, um, who oh, has signed. Uh, Audu, please, uh, you can unmute yourself and um, ask your questions. Yeah, good afternoon to all. Um, thank you for that uh, wonderful presentation by uh, Dr. Joaquin. Um, I just have uh, one or two questions to clarify. Uh, in the last statement he just made, he has pointed to one of my questions, and that is to have to do with um, looking at this uh, blended financing um, and uh, 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 wash trust fund that is in the bill of uh, water resources. I just wanted to have clarified what is the difference? Is there any difference between this wash? Trust fund and this uh, blended um, financing, <clears throat> because what I understand that by wash trust fund is to get resources into a pool, whereby uh, the objective is to help the facilities to keep running, and then you the same thing. Um, blended is also talking here, whereby um, it helps the facilities to keep running. I wanted to know what is the difference or similarities between these two bodies. I that, hope that we are not trying to duplicate what it has been uh, in existence. That is one. And two, um, I want to know the framework for which this um, blended financing will, will, will be operated on. Um, because uh, in one, while talking, presenting the, uh, the, the topic, he <coughs> said, those uh, corporate bodies or whoever that is bringing the, the blend the finance upon which this uh, facility to leverage a mindset of making the cooking their money and make profit so what is the basis to determine where what profit shall be made on these facilities and where there is failure what will happen to the investor who provided the blended funding please if i wanted him to clarify on this issue thank you Thank you. Let me start from uh, the letter question you posed. Framework upon which, you see, when you talk about the framework, framework can, if a, a resource lady, ready utility or an entity can develop a framework and uh, use it to negotiate for, for assistance and support. If I have, I know some, some states have, uh, apart from having water laws or whatever, they also have a private uh, PPP public-private partnership laws. So those things could be used as a framework where these things can be described and uh, methodologies uh, well described. So I hope uh, I've answered your question with regards to that. Then when you talk about the difference between Watch Trust Fund and bladed financing, I can tell you that the Watch Trust Fund, if it comes up, uh, it will help... Uh, bladed finance to, to thrive because in as much as two of them are all aimed at keeping the, the waters running, you find that uh, the Watch Trust Fund can give you funding or finance at a much cheaper rate and at a less risky uh, rate uh, 
to support you. It's more, more like when you have a, 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 a trust, a trust, a trust to give people scholarship. People goes there to to get money. So it's an intervention, more like an intervention uh, fund 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 that helps utilities that I need or water service providers that I need to 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 to, to keep being operational. Then for blended financing is an opportunity to 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 optimize the good work you are doing because you have resources from multiple uh, openings which if it works well will be even much larger or bigger than whatever you are able to get from the wash trust fund even the blended financing can also enrich the trust fund if the trust fund want because trust fund on its own is more like blended blended funding people are putting money there not for return on investment but just for social impact i hope i've answered your question thank you Okay, uh, we, we have three more persons that want to ask questions. Um, Mark Ademi Mark Ademi and um, Dr. Bolu and Sonosi, we could um, give them 30, 30 seconds to ask their questions quickly. Quickly, so we could um, try to wrap up. Okay, so Mr. Mark, please. Good, good, good morning, all. Okay. Uh, th thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for that beautiful presentation, Dr. Ezeji. Uh, I just want to add this, that and, uh, when, when, I, when we're getting to real issues, getting to the ground, especially in the utilities or in the sector, when it comes to really delivering the services, we need to think of how do we get business cases and most of the time, we attempt to solve the entire utility problems, and it doesn't work. But we can always look for cherry pick, you know, strategic locations where we can establish good business cases. Is it possible for this uh, this initiative to think in that direction? So you are not looking at taking care of utility and its entire value chain and its entire mandate. But if you can cherry pick strategic places where at a very short time you can make a uh, good business, then we can begin to turn around things. Is, is this a possible approach to dealing with these issues? Yeah, why not? I think um, on, on, it's a, I will say yes and no. Because when you, utility is a system. I hope you know what when we talk about utility as a system, it's a system that means any as any part of it that is constrained will affect the other areas. It's not like uh, you have the water source, you have uh, the treatment plant, then you have uh, uh, the distribution system, then you have uh, maybe the meters at the end. So at any of these points, any any constraint on one will affect the entire system. So if, if you say, okay, let me invest in metering, and then the pipes that bring water to the points of metering and all those things are, are broken or ruptured or vandalized, people are tapping water illegally, then what have you achieved? If you train personnel and there are no facilities or infrastructure for personnel to work with, then you, so it's a system, you look at it holistically. That is what, when you do vulnerability analysis, you look at the entire the, the gamut, you look at the entire system. You don't look at part of part of the system. So um, the only thing we can do, I have always suggested this, and I think I've discussed it with Vicky, is to segment the utilities. You can have another company to run the water source and the treatment plant. The different company, they will now sell water, just like we did with electricity, sell water to the distributors. So they get water from the source, treat it, and then you you buy from them. You then you make sure that the quality is good. That's why you're buying. If the quality is not good, you will not buy. And the regulator will insist the quality is good. So the, you have some experts working in this area. Then you have people who will be in charge of distribution, working at the distribution distribution end. Then you 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 make the utility leaner. You make it lean, so that because the major problem that 
that is disturbing the the, the sea sector is you have a lot of people. The government house people always send people to or the GM will say, oh, I want more people to be employed. If you employ everybody, calculate how many people you have. What is the staff connection ratio? What is what what is it? So if you have more than if you 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 have only uh, maybe 300 connections, active connections, who are paying, and then you have 3,000 staff. That is that is too high for you. You shouldn't have more than three staff or five staff per connection so that you improve your efficiency. So when you do that kind of thing, that should be what should bother us. You know that you don't have so much uh, that is hanging on your head. So you make the utility leaner, you decentralize some of the operations that happen there. And you have you have a utility that is more uh, more 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 partition to, to, to work. So for your question I'll say yes and no. I hope I've answered your question. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, yeah. Dr. Boy. Yeah, who's next? Dr. Boy, you have a your question. Well, good <coughs> good afternoon, everyone, and um, thank you, Ms. Vicky, for organizing this, and Dr. Joachim for your um, very, very clear presentation. I joined a little bit later than I would have wanted. I just wanted to point out um, a critical um, aspect of blended finance. Um, in addition to the innovative financing um, mechanisms that um, Dr. Joachim, all that has been discussed, it's that um, type of financing, and I'm not sure how much we have used this in Nigeria, but I know I've been involved in negotiations outside Nigeria around it, where a donor agency, for example, in this case, was the EU um, negotiating with a government to use um, their reach, their reach to get banks, European Union banks, to give out loans to the country at um, um, with interest rates that is even lower than multilateral banks would do. So mm -hmm. the component of blended financing there is that it's a mixture of a grant as well as a loan at very low interest rates and mm -hmm. the payment of the period of repayment and the other terms are also very, very uh, much closer to grants. I just wanted to also uh, point that out, that it's one of the ways that we should also um, try and use our um, contacts and our positions in some of these um, donor organizations to negotiate for blended financing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bolu. I, I, thank you for, for bringing this up. You see, I agree with you. E e blender financing, grants, loan, and a utility that is business ready. That's why I said enterprise. Business ready, develop its framework for assessing these facilities, can seek audience with USID. We have experts in these areas. And I can tell you, a lot of private sector groups are very good. They are utilizing all these things. If we mm. have a utility that has really undergone transformation, say, I'm born again, I'm investment ready. Like all this work we're doing under eWatch is to make these utilities investment ready. What we're doing is also giving, bringing those grants, technical assistance to make you investment ready. If at the end of undergoing a USID reform, you're unable to access with multilateral loan or bilateral loan or whatever, mm -hmm. you cannot get money that you can pay over an agreed period of time, then it's just a waste of time. We didn't achieve the results. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely agree with you. Utilities should be able at the end of undergoing a five-year, four-year, three-year 
support by USID, go to the next step. If you're unable to go to the next step, rather you are looking for another USID program to come, then we wasted our time. So when I see you, please come to me and say, oh, please, can you come back? I want you to continue to stay. Nobody found something in perpetuity. It's just to trigger some support, some, some long-term transformation, support you for one year, two years. Then you should be able <laughs> to hit the road. So thank you, Bolu, for bringing, bringing that one up. Thank you. Okay. Very. Okay. Okay, we have um, Oluwa Tomilayo. Um, please, could you try to reduce your question to like 30 seconds? What kind of name is Formilaya? Oluwa Tomilayo. It's a Yoruba name. Oluwa oh, sorry. Tomilayo. Yeah, yeah okay. but you're sitting there, he's okay. calling you Formilayo, and you're okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm used to that. I mean, I can understand. Um, yes, thank you for the opportunity once again. Um, Doctor, sir, I want us to understand the root cause of the problems of the water sector in Nigeria. Industry standard says six to 1,000 connections. That's for well-performing utilities. Oh. If you look at a water project, it is a divisible project. And in finance, a divisible project is a project that can be done in phases. If you're planning for a, a, a water system, you start with the water works. And in design and building, you don't build and design to serve for the current present day population, but a projected population growth for 30 years thereabouts to save in, I mean, cost of investment, land use, and thereabouts. And usually, if you have a plant that is meant to serve, let's say, 1,000 cubic meter per day, just an example, and if you optimize it, that 1,000 cubic meter is meant to serve a population of, um, let's say, 1,000 people. The city, Abia, today has a population, just an example, has a population of 10, which means you have a huge plant. You need, as, 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 as population grows, funding needs to be continued to expand the network so that more people can get into this, net, into this network and be served by the system and more revenue comes in. But the reverse is the case in Nigeria. Also, the challenges faced by these utilities presently right now is most states are doing urban utility or urban, or urban renewal, expanding routes. Pipelines are being uprooted. Connections are being reduced. So those, those constraints are challenges which I would want um, USAID or the donor agencies to look at to say that, yes, how did we get here? To say that uh, we don't want to do funding in perpetuity, perpetuity I'm not, I'm not um, agreeing to that. But to let us understand that this system, because the, the, your, your, your revenue is the function of what connections you have and how many people pays. So to take you to, to the optimal connections that your system is meant to have will require what funding and what years of support my position. Thank you very much. I don't know if I've been able to communicate. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I very your position is very ambitious, and uh, you know that uh, resources are limited. So try to be very strategic in how you apply your yeah, resources. There are apart from water supply or water services or sanitation improvement, the needs you have other priorities. We have education. You have health. You have uh, HIV. As you have tuberculosis have all that in this area that needs development assistance. So you prioritize and you hope that you'll be able to reduce your financial leakages because there's so much corruption in the system. We are very much aware of, of that. So what you usually need, when I talked about a business plan, a business plan helps somebody to look at your projections and how you plan to grow. But how many of us have business plans? How many of us have good business cases. Yes, business case for water can be very attractive. Oh, you're providing water, that will reduce poverty, that will improve health. And uh, then when you start going into the financial outlet, it becomes somehow discouraging. And uh, even if it is encouraging, how, uh, what categories of people do you have to push it through? So it's, what you said is a food for thought, but I can also tell you right away that uh, um, if uh, the work is for us to do, if as utilities we are able to have a very good uh, capture of our plans over the, the short and long term, I can tell you that uh, what we need is some level of uh, commitment and discipline. 
and uh, we'll be able to achieve achieve our plans. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, thank you so much for that explanation. We have four persons that have questions now, and I think we can only accommodate this four, these four persons because of our time. Um, I'll give the floor to Engineer Son Sonusi from Kano State to ask his question. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good morning, all, sir. I, I want to thank the organizers and also the wonderful presentation done by uh, Dr. Ezezi. So my, my, my question, there are three, but the how to fall asks two. So I'm going to ask only one question more. What I am saying, if somebody want to apply for this uh, grant and uh, maybe bl or blended financing, is there any system in place or somebody or body which they are in place which they will help or guide you so that you can achieve what you want to achieve for the program. I, I okay. hope you get my question, sir. Okay, thank you. What you do, if you would, if you if you if you want to have audience with us, I put my okay. my I have put my email on the chat box. So if you want to have yeah, audience okay. with us, uh, let me know that you want to have audience with USID. I will, will then go into okay. specifics and I'll put you through with the okay. right people here, you you can discuss your financial okay. challenges with yeah. Thank you, okay, sir. All of the different okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, very so, um, uh, you can give the floor to um Jube. Jube to ask his question. So you have the floor now. 30 seconds, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to appreciate the organizers, uh, specifically Vicky, and the presenter of this uh, very critical uh, uh, topical issue as far as uh, watch sector is concerned. I just want to quickly, I know we don't have the luxury of time any longer, but I want to appreciate Dr. Joachim for, you know, uh, this is a very complex topic to discuss, but uh, I appreciate the fact that you were very strategic to break it in a manner that uh, we have to all come to uh, terms with what we are trying to mention. So for me, I think um, what I would quickly want to say is that uh, I'm concerned about uh, the state of our water utilities. A lot of, uh, for the past two decades now, or three rather, there has been intervention in trying to reform the urban water sector. And uh, given the conditions, first, I would like to know if in the course of your work at some point, you were able to stand as a guarantee to any of this utility. Because uh, we, we also talked about uh, staff to uh, connection ratio. Uh, yeah, we may need little number of staff to connection ratio. But again, another factor that I have to play in is the quality of the staff. And I remember in one of the reforms in Bauchi, VIPC, you did quite a very good work in trying to support uh, the utility put in an organizational structure and other key uh, factors that will create the enabling environment for uh, a private sector to come in and also to be able to leverage additional funding. And you made mention of the EWASH project, which is critical, is one of the most robust urban reforms I've seen in this country. I remember at some point there was, uh, there was a call to conduct a credit risk assessment for some of the utilities that eWash was intervening in their state. And I know the whole idea is to identify the credit readiness, the uh, credit worthiness of these utilities to be able to access you know, uh, this uh, additional blending funding. I don't know whether that has really worked, and then uh, maybe finally, uh, I would like to know, given the situation uh, uh, in, in USID, as far as the DCA is concerned, uh, what would you now say, given the scenario in Nigeria, will be the critical factor that water utilities are ne uh, would need to put in place in order to, to, to access or USID to stand as a guarantor for any financing uh, opportunity? Thank you. And over. Yeah, thank you. Let me 
start from the last one. When you talk about the DCA, the Development Credit Authority, we give it to commercial, commercial, commercially oriented organizations, commercial entities. And commercial entities are, that are doing businesses, more like enterprise organizations. So unfortunately, many utilities may not be able to get it unless they reform and uh, remove the toga of government. Because when the government is... Public agencies really benefit from DCAs. So organizations that have a board that is properly structured and um, you have good accounting systems, you, you are run properly like a business. Those are the ones that are structured to, to benefit from DCAs. Not we are not ones we are uh, other other criteria determine who who comes in and uh, we don't do them professionally. If you look at the objectives of he was said professionally managed, professionally managed. So ask yourself how to what extent have you been professionally managed for the past 10, 15 years. I know that Vicky has been talking about institutional strengthening. It's just to make sure that utilities get professionally managed. When she we invite her, she finishes her presentation. She goes, "Do you practice what she, all those gospels she preaches? That she preaches." So that is the thing. So you must be professional managed to benefit from this year. You must be an enterprise. Then, two, uh, you watch this some credit credit uh, readiness of uh, utilities assessment of utilities. I think at the end of the day, only one or two of the utilities of the six utilities did well. Uh, I think the utility in Niger did well, and then I uh, think the one in Taraba also did well. The other ones, I think uh, they were not selling water, so they didn't do well. And uh, uh, because the thing is that you, you you were developed to sell water, you were developed to sell water, and they, you must have systems in place to sell water. So if you go to utilities like Bauchi, Niger, yeah, yeah, they Nah. Yeah, they, they, they are selling water and the, the chalk of their revenue comes from water sales. But some utilities are not are not even bothered to sell water. It's more like waiting for the governor to bring to bring to bring money and uh, and that is a problem. That has remained a problem. So they they can ask if they don't have copies, if for those utilities consigned, or even I expect uh, maybe the Federal Ministry of Water Resources to call for that report on the credit uh, worthiness of uh, of some of those utilities so that we can use it as an entry point to to expand or to to do some extra work on the on the reform on those utilities. Uh, you raise you raise you raise the poser on the quality of staff when we talk of, about staff per connection. I agree with you. The quality of staff matters but you, but the thing is that the thing is eating into the resources of the utility. If you call somebody a staff, that means you are paying that person. So we look at all cost heads, all items on your cost head. You are paying money. So if you are paying money, you also receive money that covers those cost heads. So that is so. If you start looking at quality, then it may not really be a key consideration here. Um, when you talk about me being a guarantor for for a utility that is what i do every day i guarantee everybody if you have i have had meetings with if we have 36 utilities in nigeria i think i've i've met all the gms both past and present and i have had at various stages discussed with each of them so i continue to share with them on their frustrations i also continue to to share in their optimisms and uh, and opportunities they see so i I, I I I guarantee what you do when you benefit from what we do, when we give you audience, or even when you are sent on training or supported in one way or the other. All those things are uh, forms of guarantee. Continue to 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 have a pool of opportunities to work with anybody. We do not we do not discriminate against anybody. All we need is just to be promising. I remember when I came to USID the first time. So there was opportunity to work. They said, okay, where do we want us to work on? So okay, we have utilities in Kanu, in Kaduna and uh, and Bauchi that are very promising. I was asked what are the what are the statistics? So look at this, look at this. At least I know that they are selling water and we have seen cases of reforms, a lot of innovations happening in these places all the time. 
So I remember when I was in Jaika, we had a presentation. We invited the people from Kaduna to do a presentation. Then we had Mr. Sonny Elijah and his MD come to do a presentation. And I remember what Vicky said. He said, oh, these people, this pair, they are like brothers and sisters. They are doing a lot of work in this place. So that was the motivation. When we came down here, when I came to USID eventually, we said, okay, we'll take a breath. Okay, this utility is doing well. This one is doing well. Because these are testimonials from industry leaders, industry thought, thought leaders. So, and we did some work there. And the result from what we did was was very good. So, so that is that is the thing. We continue to guarantee these cities based on both expert judgment and interactions, observations we see when we interact with people. Thank you.